biology. So I'd like to ask you, does somebody in the audience have an idea of the relationship between chemistry to molecular biology? Please, don't be shy. Yes, in the back. Right, so, so very good. So the answer is that a lot of the reactions that take place inside of the cell are, in fact, uh, just chemistry, and they involve chemical compounds, and so we can illustrate them on the bench top. Any other reason for using these sorts of demonstrations? Yes. Isn't chemistry considered the basis of all life processes? And so uh, in demonstrating molecular biology, we need to use chemistry. E excellent. So chemistry is the basis of all of the life properties and processes. Any anyone else? Why, why do the demonstrations out here on this table, can't we, why don't we do the actual biochemical demonstrations? Does someone have a, an answer to that? In the back there. Is it because it's at a much smaller scale? Excellent answer, and please speak up when you give the answers. She, she said that it's because it's on a much smaller scale. And so if we were restricted to biochemical demonstrations, it would be hard to get enough material uh, within our budget, at least, at least, in order to show uh, a, a whole beaker full of biological material undergoing a reaction, whereas simple chemical reactions can illustrate many of the same principles uh, in, in a way that we'll then later try to relate to the biochemical example. So let's start out uh, with something very simple that has to do with these balloons, and there's a third one that's fallen onto the floor. And I'm going to use this just as a, a type of an analogy to illustrate how scientists approach problems. And then we'll make the biochemical uh, correspondence a little bit later. So I'm going to tell you to start with that these three balloons are each filled with a different gas. One is filled with air, one has helium in it, and the other has hydrogen. So do, do any of you uh, want to make a hypothesis or hazard a, a guess as to which of these balloons might have which gas in it. Yes, back there. The one that's on the uh, table is probably air. Okay, and this is probably air, and then... The orange would be hydrogen, and the yellow would be helium. Now, okay, so that's an interesting guess. So, so let me, I need to know your reasoning, though. Why, how did you differentiate between them? Well... In my recent experiences, I've seen that when you, when you blow up blue with your mouth, over a period of time, it starts to, like, sort of fall down. It starts to lose its, I don't know, its lift. Okay, so you're talking about this has to do, its lift has to do with the density of the gas inside the balloon relative to what? The density of? of the air, because that's what, what the b balloon is in. So uh, I think you, you've uh, correctly surmised that this is the one that has to be uh, holding air, and that the other two have to be holding the hydrogen and the helium. But does someone else have an idea? And you made a guess, but I'd, I'd like to, someone else to comment on uh, how we might be able to differentiate the hydrogen from the helium. Over here. Um, well, I think the yellow one has hydrogen in it because um, it seems to be pulling more on, on the string. It's, a much, it's, dense, it's uh, less dense than helium. Okay, so a comment was made that perhaps the yellow one uh, is the hydrogen. You said that the orange one was the hydrogen, so we have a, so far one vote for each, but the comment was that if we could make, or let me par paraphrase your comment by saying that if we could make a careful measurement of the density of the gas, since hydrogen uh, is less dense than helium, that that would be an experiment that we could do uh, to differentiate the two. Anybody else have a different idea? Because a scientist doesn't just look at things and make up a, a his mind or her mind, a scientist interrogates the system. Isn't that a great word? But you have to do an experiment. You have to, you have to probe the balloons in some way to really answer this question. Back there. Um, well, hydrogen is flammable and helium isn't. A hydrogen is flammable. Well, that's a great idea. Well, I just happen to have a device, a very simple device, that will allow us to make a test. I need two volunteers from the audience, so uh, uh, you, f if you can come down from the middle there, and how about you um, in the second row, yes, and uh, if you can each put on some safety goggles, 
And you're Katie? Yes. And you are Erika. Erika. Okay, Erika, I'm going to have you, since you're over on the left, start out, and I would like you to perform this interrogation of the yellow balloon. And wait, now, just w wait a minute here. Let me, <laughs> let me get, this is very safe, I assure you, but do it at arm's length, and don't be shy, and uh, go right for the yellow part of the balloon. No, don't jump, just simply <laughs> hold the candle up to the balloon itself. No, you have to be a little more bold here. And we'll see. Don't, don't break the string, but get the balloon itself. <laughs> Rick, I'm going to have to ask for another volunteer. <laughs> okay, anyone? Uh, what's the answer? Hydrogen or helium? Helium. helium? helium. Okay, so the helium escaped, but it was not flammable. And so, Katie, that leaves it to you. <laughs> now... We can't be sure I was telling the truth. They could both contain helium, or perhaps there's even another gas that's lighter than air. Okay, now let's be prepared here, just in case. A um, little higher. <laughs> so that's a simple demonstration, then, of the scientific method. Let's give a hand to Katie and Erika for helping out. Now, you might wonder whether there was any uh, toxic gas released in that experiment, and as you can see from the slide, uh, we're really just producing water. This is uh, an example of an extremely simple reaction in which two hydrogen molecules, each of which contain hydrogen atoms bonded together, react with an oxygen molecule, these bonds are broken, and new bonds are formed between oxygen and hydrogen to give two water molecules as the product of this reaction. So uh, even though this is a very simple case, biochemical reactions are like this as well. They involve not the destruction of individual atoms, but the rearrangement of atoms to form new molecules. And so there's a lot of similarity. Uh, I think, though, that it might be worth asking the question, uh, how is this sort of a simple reaction, chemical reaction, different from biochemical reactions that take place in the cells of your own body? So does one of you want to uh, give a, an answer to that question? Yes, in the front. Could Stargiva cellars catalyze almost all the enzymes accelerate the reaction? So in the, the answer was that in the cell, the reactions have to be catalyzed uh, and they have to be controlled by enzymes. They don't just happen uh, when you light a match, or at least that's not the kind of catalysis that is going to be involved for a cellular reaction. And that's one excellent answer. Someone else have, a, have a, another answer to that question, the difference between this sort of biochemical reaction. How, how, let's think in terms of, well, again, we talked about the scale of the reaction before. Obviously, um, the reactions are taking place on a much smaller scale. One of the products of this reaction that isn't listed on the slide is heat. And you could see, maybe you could, if you were in the front row, maybe you could even feel the heat that was generated. Do you think that's a similarity or a difference? Do you think that biochemical reactions sometimes generate heat as well? Yes. Uh, yes, but not on the same magnitude. Not on the same magnitude, that's right. But they do generate heat. They don't generate heat on the same magnitude because, of course, we have much less material involved, and so the heat is going to be proportional to the amount of material. But one of the reasons that you, as a mammal, are maintaining a uh, 37 degrees, degrees C as a body temperature has to do with the heat that's being produced by met metabolic reactions inside of your body. Um, I would say that another difference between the 